This will be the next uh, installation in uh, covering the book What a Plant Knows, A Field Guide to the Senses by Daniel Chamovitz. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. This is Chapter 5, How a Plant Knows Where It Is. So how does a plant know to send its shoots up and its roots, its roots downward? Uh, if it's a response to gravity, then how do shoots and roots grow in different directions? And if it's a response to sunlight, then how would a seed know what to do when it's still underground? And how would aerial roots know to grow downward? Now, humans know up from down um, due to a, a sixth sense that's not ESP. It's called proprioception. And that means uh, knowing where your body is without really having to look at it. Uh, as in, when you're drunk, you um, have troubles with your proprioception. Most of this positional sense is due to your inner ear. Uh, there are special structures in there that um, have uh, essentially the little sand grain-like uh, crystals. Uh, they're called otoliths, so little sand grains in um, a liquid with little hairs all around. And uh, when you turn upside down, those little otoliths then uh, respond to gravity, and the hairs on where, whatever is the downside at the moment detect them falling towards it and tell your brain uh, hey, you know, we're laying on our side over here, and um, uh, you can act accordingly. Um, additionally, you have some other um, proprioception nerves throughout your body to tell your arms and your legs, you know, are you going to fall off that balance beam? Uh, is your leg in the right place? Uh, all that type of thing. So how do plants know up from down? Uh, for many years, people assumed that roots just grew downward in response to gravity. Uh, in the early 1800s, uh, somebody named Thomas Sandrew Knight um, put um, uh, plants on a water wheel that uh, you know he could control the speed of it with um, the amount of water that was being allowed to sluice over it. And uh, he let the plants sort of stabilize all in an upright position with the, with the wheel um, not moving, and then let it spin. And sure enough, um, the plants um, oriented themselves uh, to their new um, detection of gravity, which in that case was centrifugal force and uh, the roots grew um, uh, towards uh, the outside of the uh, wheel and the shoots grew uh, in uh, towards the inside of the wheel in response to that force. So in the late 1800s, uh, Darwin and his son Francis um, were looking at the same question and they sliced off the tips of roots and just laid them on their side and observing that the D-tipped roots did not um, uh, respond to gravity anymore but if they laid them on their side an hour and a half before they detipped them, then the roots would still reorient. So they concluded, one, that the root tips were the gravity sensing uh, structure, and um, two, that they sent the reorientation reorient instructions immediately upon being laid on their side. So that those instructions had, uh, had somehow been received by the root um, before the, uh, the detipping occurred. So they did the same experiment with uh, shoots. So they cut off the shoot tips and laid the plants on their side, but the plants still reoriented. So this was the opposite result from their shoot experiments and not what they expected. And so that left the question, uh, do shoots and roots sense gravity by a different means somehow? So uh, as often is the case in science, um, new developments uh, need to uh, occur before the next question can be answered. And so it was quite a few years later that uh, our friend Arabidopsis had become the, the uh, laboratory donkey that it is today. And uh, mutants were developed that don't respond to being turned on their sides. Some, uh, a variety of mutants, uh, some that would, uh, both the roots and the shoots don't respond to that uh, stimulus the, uh, being turned. And some that only the roots um, don't know enough to, uh, to reorient or only the shoots. So um, the conclusion then was that roots and shoots uh, have different gravity sensors. And that, in, to some extent, then uh, um, agrees with Darwin's observations that um, uh, detipping the shoots didn't have the same result as detipping the roots. So um, how plants know up from down three, now it's the early 2000s. And um, a scientist observed that uh, plants with um, uh, defective gravity sensing in their shoots and stem don't have an endodermis. And the endodermis is that uh, special layer of um, uh, cells that form a, 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 um, a ring around the vascular tissues in both the root and the shoot and um, uh, regulate the amount of um, uh, water and other things coming in and out of the vascular tissues. 
So no, um, no endodermis, no ability to sense gravity by the chute. And so we do remember that the root tips contain the gravity sensors for the roots. And so the conclusion was um, that the gravity sensor for the chutes is the endodermis, and the gravity sensing system is indeed different from the roots. So uh, how do plants know um, where the um, uh, that the root or tip or the endodermis has been uh, reoriented. Um, studies of those two um, structures, or of the root tips, showed a large uh, statoliths, which are just uh, really big amyloplasts, uh, sort of specialized, um, or starch grains, in other words, for amyloplasts, are in the root cap cells, or the root tip cells. And um, they um, respond to gravity. So when the root is turned, um, the, the little statolus just act like this sort of sand-like grain, the otolus, in your ears. They fall to one side of the root and, uh, the, and indicates to the root that it has been moved. Um, the same in the endodermis. Uh, they're large statolus that can respond to gravity. Um, additionally, <coughs> plants that were put on the space shuttle didn't respond to be, being reoriented. And um, <coughs> the assumption being that because the statolus did not respond to gravity. So the statolus um, have been uh, then are in the um, sort of crosshairs as being identified as uh, instrumental in uh, plants knowing up from down. But then how do they respond to gravity? <coughs> Remember that uh, the detipping experiment in when we were looking at plants being able to see um, showed that an unknown factor uh, moved from the tip of a stalk uh, down into the stalk to uh, direct response to sunlight. And uh, this was shown by um, if the stalk was, the tip was cut off and then placed back on the stalk with a little piece of glass separating it um, from the stalk, there no bending occurred. But if it was placed on um, like a little permeable piece of gelatin, like agar in an agar dish, um, then bending occurred. So something was able to ooze out of that stalk tip down through the agar and to the chute and uh, tell it to go ahead and bend. And um, by the 1930s, um, this was identified as auxin, which is now known as an extremely important plant hormone. Auxin instructs the cells to increase in length. So for in the situation of the plant uh, reacting to sunlight, auxin accumulates on the dark side of the stalk. And so those cells uh, elongate, and then they, they force the plant to curve towards the sun because the plants on the sunlit side of the cell, are, the cell on the sunlit side of the plant, are not elongating. Um, this works just like a, a, you know, a circus clown's balloon that, um, you know, as he blows it up, it comes to be like a big extended uh, curve, a big C shape. Um, that's because the inner side of that balloon is not expanding as much as the outer and uh, making the balloon curve. So um, how respond, plants respond to gravity? Part three, auxin level increases where the statoliths accumulate. So um, on the bottom side of the root cells, the statoliths uh, respond to gravity. Those cells grow downward. On the lower side of the cells in the endodermis of a plant that's tilted, those the statoliths fall to the lower um, edges of those cells, and that causes those, that area of those cells to um, extend and curve towards um, cords up which is uh, very similar to um, how plants uh, react to uh, curving towards the light source. So this is how plants uh, respond to gravity, and this response is called gravitropism. Plant dancing. Turns out they can do more than just respond to gravity. Uh, and Darwin, again, observed that plants move in a recurring spiral or oscillations, um, and he called it circumnutation. He spent a lot of time uh, very uh, meticulously standing and watching plants and every 10 minutes uh, uh, noting uh, whether they had moved or not on a glass that he was holding, a uh, glass plate that he was holding near them. Um, it varies with species, but almost all plants do it. Um, distance that they move and the speed that they move varies enormously. Uh, some plants being, um, uh, you know, practically flopping around and others um, uh, you just about need a motion camera to um, detect it. Here is uh, our friend Rabidopsis flailing around um, uh, quite dramatically. And uh, plants will have sort of different um, uh, st uh, traces that they make. The, the actual line that they draw is not always the same. Uh, and the speed can be influenced by environment. Um, somebody's observed that if you burn a leaf on a plant, um, the circumnutation speeds up for a cycle or two and then um, uh, returns back to the normal. Um, 
rate and distance. So how does this happen? Or why does it happen? Uh, Darwin theorized that the circumnutation was built into plants, based a lot, largely on the fact that they all did it. Um, it just seemed to be something that was inherent in plants. But other scientists over the years have theorized that it was actually a corrective a action to um, keep themselves um, straight up, that they're per perpetually um, correcting against gravitropism. So they sort of um, over, you know, too far to the east, and then, oops, they're going to correct from that, and then next thing you know, you're too far to the west, and then just, you know, constantly uh, correcting from being not quite exactly perfectly um, erect. In um, uh, 83, a scientist um, organized having some sunflower seedlings sent up on the space shuttle where they should have no gravity or essentially no gravity, and uh, theorizing that if, um, or hypothesizing that if it, this is, um, the circumnutation is due to gravitropism, that it shouldn't occur in space. However, the plants circumnutated like crazy, so uh, Darwin's uh, built-in theory uh, seemed to be supported. However, other scientists, um, observed mutant plants that had no gravity response also didn't circumnutate. They saw that both in morning glory with no gravity sensing endodermis, uh, no circumnutation, and in Arabidopsis with defective statolith, no circumnutation. So time for a rethink. Uh, fortunately, um, rather than uh, just yell at each other like our uh, political parties do, they came up with some more experiments. To review then, um, the situation is that uh, the plants circumnutate in gravityless space, suggesting that it's not a constant correction of gravity responses. But gravitropism mutants don't circumnutate, suggesting that circumnutation is due to constant correction of gravity. So more experiments. In 1990s, uh, we didn't have necessarily an experiment, but somebody suggested that the space shuttle uh, flights um, experiments might have been um, uh, influenced by the fact that the seedlings were germinated on Earth and then put into the space shuttle. Um, and that remained uh, just a theory, and so that they had enough ex uh, exposure to gravity that they were still circumnutating even when they were um, without gravity. Um, that theory was just a theory um, because uh, 10 days in the space shuttle wasn't enough time to uh, get things germinated and, um, and do the tests. So eventually, in about 2000, uh, the space station became operational. and um, Arabidopsis, once again, sent up there and germinated in space and observed carefully. Um, they noticed that the plants did circumnutate, but very, very um, uh, slowly and with a much um, uh, reduced uh, degree of, of uh, uh, spiraling. And, but when they put them in a drum and did, you know, essentially a similar experiment to um, uh, um, the gentleman back in the 1800s, um, they noticed that by simulating gravity in that way, um, then the speed and the extent of the movements did increase to approximately the same levels as on the Earth. So the conclusion was that circumnutation is built in, so Darwin's theory uh, was, uh, was validated, but also that it needs gravity for full expression. So the other scientists' theory were also uh, validated. So in this case, um, everybody was right. So in conclusion, um, plants are pulled in different directions at the same time towards the sun, toward gravity, um, and other different uh, things happening to them. Um, they have a hormone statolith sensing system that they can respond to um, these different uh, things that are happening to their environment by changing their growth direction, whether it's uh, changing in response to light or changing in response to gravity. And uh, this balance of senses is needed, obviously, for them to optimize, optimize their growth. And um, it all just underscores there's a lot of clever ways that plants have to adapt to uh, an immobile life. That concludes Chapter 5.